Welcome back. I'm Melissa Harris Perry. It's 11 o'clock on the East Coast, and you know what that means here in Nerdland. It's time for This Week in Voter Suppression. This week, you may be feeling a bit of deja vu because someone who's been making regular weekly appearances in voter suppression as recently as last week is still at it. It seems that Ohio Secretary of State John Houston just won't give up on his crusade to use his political power and influence to place restrictions around voting in the battleground state. He continues to take a stand for suppression, even after not one, not two, but three courts have told him have a seat. First, there was the federal court judge back in August who cited against the Ohio law to block voting the last weekend before Election Day. Houston didn't like that court's decision, so he tried another one. When the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit heard his appeal, a three-judge panel agreed with the first court and decided unanimously to also strike down Ohio's early voting restrictions. But like Goldilocks and the Three Bears house, Houston still hadn't found a court that was just right for him. So he tried a third one, the U.S. Supreme Court. And this week, even that court wasn't trying to hear it. With no dissents, no dissents, with no dissents, the Supreme Court issued a one-sentence order denying Ohio's appeal and approving voting for everyone in Ohio the final three days before November 6th. Now, most people would concede defeat at this point. Not John. When stopped from limiting the early voting days, he resorted to limiting the hours Ohioans can vote on those days. As Nation writer and friend of Nerdland Ari Berman reported this week, Houston restricted voting on Saturday, November 3rd through Monday, November 5th to 16 hours for all three days. Compare that to 2008 when early voting was available in Ohio's highly populated counties for up to 24 hours in the three days prior to the election. And even then, some people waited in line for up to two and a half hours to vote. Still with me, Christina Beltran, NYU Associate Professor of Social and Cultural Analysis, Victoria Bassetti, author of Electoral Function, excuse me, Electoral Dysfunction, that's kind of the whole point. Um, Chris Aiken, Professor of Politics at Princeton University, and Melanie Rousseau, the National Press Secretary for the DNC. Also joining me from Washington, D.C., one of our This Week in Voter Suppression superstars, <laughs> Judith Brown Dianis, co-director of the Advancement Project. Nice to see you, Judith. Nice to see you, Melissa. So, okay. Ohio is, I mean, this is, it's all going to happen in Ohio, right? This is the right. most important space for this election. Mm -hmm. What are the most pressing concerns about voter suppression in that place between now and Election Day? Well, you know, in Ohio, we continue to have this relentless effort to restrict the right to vote. And it started off with politicians trying to do it. And we will see as we get closer to the election that there will be political operatives, mm -hmm. individuals and organizations that will engage in efforts to restrict the vote. And so we have Houston trying to continue to go to the courts. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, let me do it through the administrative process. I'll cut back on the hours on my own. Um, and now we have, you know, we are concerned about the efforts um, with regard to the billboards that we saw in Wisconsin yep. and Ohio, yep. which Advancement Project and other civil rights organizations put up countervailing billboards. So, um, so Judith, before you go mm -hmm. any further, pause right there and just remind folks, if they were watching last week, then they saw right. those, um, those billboards in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. but remind people what those billboards say. Sure. So the billboards say uh, that voter fraud is against the law, that there's a $10,000 fine and three years of imprisonment. Put all in black communities in Milwaukee and in Ohio and some Latino communities. And so we know that these billboards are put up to intimidate people, scare them off from voting, because there's a lot of mythology around what happens if, for example, you vote and you didn't pay your parking tickets, or you vote and you didn't pay child support, or you voted and you didn't show up for jury duty. Those kinds of things make people think, uh-oh, I need to stay away. And so what we had to do is we have to educate voters. We have to do a countervailing balance because we know that there are people who don't want African Americans and Latinos to vote. So, so let me ask you about this countervailing, because it seems to me that part of what happens is if you take what, um, what folks are meant to be doing, um, what mm -hmm. their actual jobs are, and you say, okay, instead of doing that, you, or, or you have to do that, but you also now have to educate voters, you have to put up new billboard yet that mm -hmm. you actually add this kind of additional burden this additional cost to folks for just attempting to um, to vote is, is that what this is it's sort of in the end that, that no matter what the 
what these judges have said, because every court has said, no, you can't do these things, that nonetheless just causing the confusion, causing the stress is enough to suppress right. the vote? Well, yeah, that's what we're concerned about. You know, this will make it harder for people to vote. In Pennsylvania, for example, just yesterday, Advancement Project had to file a petition with the court because there continues to be a campaign of confusion by the state telling people, oh, get your ID. And then in small print in their ads, it will say it's not required. <laughs> and so, you know, so we had to file, a, 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 you know, something with the court saying, stop it. Stop the yeah. campaign of confusion. And so, yes, we are worried that people are going to be confused, but, you know, the civil rights community, voting rights community, we're doing a yeoman's job of trying to get out the word that you don't need ID, that you have a right to vote. Let me ask you um, w one more question, because I'm really interested in the fact that True the Vote, as you point out, mm -hmm. it started with politicians. Now we've got these one-off organizations like so-called True the Vote um, right. that, are, that are upping their um, intimidation t tactics. And True the Vote is suing John Houston for not doing enough to suppress the vote, basically, right? I mean, right, right. I, I got right. like this was the one for me. I was like, "Are you serious?" So, That's so right. explain that to me. That's right. True the Vote wants him to go farther, you know? <laughs> um, it is just ridiculous. True the Vote wants to do purging right before the election. Yep. You know, they, they're they True the Vote. They're called election integrity in some states. And, you know, we are seeing those efforts really starting to take hold. They want to make sure that they can get people off the rolls before this election. And we're really concerned about that, but we're also concerned about the real voter fraud that's going to happen in the next few weeks. I'm sure that over the next few weeks, Melissa, in this week in voter suppression, <laughs> you'll be covering things like the intimidation, deceptive practices, yep. all the kinds of last minute things yep. to block people from the voting booth. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Judith. Um, Thanks. Uh, you know, undoubtedly, we will still be on this we're, week. We're fighting back, in voter though, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 I, and I appreciate that. And, and that, you know, critically is going to make all the difference for the quality of our democracy. Thank you uh, to Thanks. Judith Brown Dianis in Washington. Thanks, everyone. More voter suppression still to come. That's a tease for this show, but apparently it's also a prediction for our system. I'm bringing in the panel when we come back.